I'm going to insert a Smith chart. And remember, our S parameter data and our harmonic balance data is in this data set. So I will select S11 because it's only a one port. If I had more than one port, I would see those other measurements here. So I'll simply add S11. And here it is on the Smith chart. Now for the markers. The marker is easily attached to any trace by using this marker icon right here. And you're prompted to put that marker on a trace. It can be that trace. We can get another one and put it on our Smith chart. Notice the readout. You can move it around. And you can also edit the marker properties. Simply double click on the readout. And here you can see the dialog that appears. In this main tab, you can change the marker name. So it doesn't have to be M1, M2, M3. You could name it whatever you want. Simply type in a name, and you'll see that on the readout. The type is either normal or the peak value, min, max, and that's the same as the icons. If you go to the format and you're on a Smith chart, you could also have admittance. You can change it from the format of real and imaginary to magnitude and phase, whatever you like to read it out as. And finally here for the impedance, the reference impedance can be 50 or 75 or whatever you want to use. So all of this is available, including changing the symbol. That's the normal symbol, but any of these, even the font, you can change colors for markers. So all this is available, and I suggest trying them when you can. So those are the marker properties. To move a marker, simply drag it or in the case of this S parameter on the Smith chart, you can insert it, insert the cursor right into the readout, and then change the value, and the marker will go to that value. And you can use every one of these settings for minimum marker, max, peak, valley, and even delta marker mode, where you insert two markers, and then the difference between those is in your readout. So those are the basics of handling the data, plotting the data, putting it in lists. I want to show you one more list. And here it is. It's simply a list of the mix component here, or the mix table from harmonic balance. And you can see these are index values, and you'll want to use those when you use equations. So let's write an equation. And the way to do that is to insert the equation, just like that from the palette. And now you can see that it's going to be entered here. This is our equation editor. And you can learn all about the functions that are available to operate on data in ADS by going to Function Help. When you click on this, you'll go to Help Manuals. It'll take you right there, and you'll see all the functions. Now I'm going to write an equation here. And the equation will be for power of the fundamental. So I'm naming it whatever I want, equal to. And I'm going to use a very simple function, dbm. And then in parentheses, I'm going to type in the data that I want. Or I can select it from the list here, v out. And if I insert it, it appears. And because I want only the fundamental, I'm going to use square brackets and put that 1 from the mix table, because that's the one I want, in parentheses and then complete the equation like that. When I click Apply, if there were any errors, it would appear here. And here is our equation. Now it will turn red if it's not valid. And to put the equation in a list, you simply insert a new list. And then you select for equations right here at the bottom. And then here is our equation, and add it. And that's how you use equations in ADS. And here is our power in the fundamental in DBM. And you can also double click and then go to Plot Options and title the plot Power of the Fundamental in DBM. And click OK. And now your list or your plot has a title. At this point, we've covered a lot of detail about the data display window how to work with data sets and plot and list data, use markers, and even write a basic equation. I'm going to show you how to use other data in ADS, and that will be the completion of our video. To use other data in ADS, the most common ways are shown here 
First is the S&P component. That's located in the Data Items palette. Select the one you want, depending upon the number of ports. And then you have to assign the file. This could be your measured S parameter results or from some other file. Simply an S parameter file. The types are shown here. They can be touchstone, another data set, or city file. Very easy to use these SNP components and you just connect them. Now the other way to do it is with a DAC. Now the DAC is an arbitrary way to point to a file. Let's look at this DAC which could be assigned for this device here which is just a BJT and the model then is the file based DAC that you see here. But you have to set up the DAC. For the DAC because it's arbitrary, you can see there are so many different types here. You simply select the one you want and make sure the file is available and then browse to it. So those are two ways to get other data into a data set from Schematic, either the DAC or the SNP. This is the end of our video on data display and data in ADS. And if you take one of our ADS courses, we go into detail and give you a lot of practice using data in the data display.